First play I did here was Oxford Street, which was all set in a trainer store in Oxford Circus. And we, it was the first show at the Royal Court that went site specific. So we did it in Elephant Castle Shopping Centre, which was interesting. Been a part of quite a few international um, development workshops. Uh, the last one I did was all about um, post-apartheid in South Africa. So we had a group of really young, really exciting playwrights from South Africa come over here. And um, I was in one of those plays and we did that upstairs at the court for a night. Playwriting is a, is a kind of international art, isn't it? It's not, you know, it's not more revered in England or America or wherever. So I think it's just interesting for us as actors to be exposed to different kinds of material, different mentalities, different kind of syntax, different language rhythms and all that, so yeah. I did the Young Writers course here almost about eight years ago, um, and I've always been interested in writing, but I guess my experience of theatre has come from an acting perspective, so um, obviously being exposed to the plays here, there was that ambition to one day start to write them myself. I've had a great support system here, and I feel like in terms of the dramaturgy here, yeah, I, mean, I mean, it's you know, second to none in the world, and it's really, it's really been amazing to be a part of that mechanism here from the actor to the writer, and, and, and it's been quite seamless in a way, so it's been really, I feel really honoured. Uh, the play that had the most impact, I think, number one, is Motor Town by Simon Stevens. So I saw that when I was at drama school, uh, came along a little uh, bottle of San Miguel. And um, yeah, I was just blown away by this play that was stripped bare and all about a soldier who comes back from Afghanistan um, on the war page, on a war rampage. And Danny Mays played the main part, uh, Raman Gray directed, and it was just a stunning piece of theater that was, it was new writing, it was completely accomplished in its form. Um, everything about it was, was just compelling. For me at drama school, you know, it was always a dream coming here and, and working as an actor, you know, it was really, it was the one, you know, more than the National, more than the Young Vic, the Royal Court. I think when you look at the actors who have come through here and the playwrights, it was definitely number one for me. What's, what was your second play that you said? Uh, Random by Debbie Tucker Green, um, which I'll, I'll get to that later, but um, one actress on stage, 50 minute monologue, no set, no props, just great poetry, great language, um, a really interesting uh, topic. And uh, yeah, I just thought how brave, how bold just to put one actress on stage, you know, and do a 50 minute monologue downstairs because you could have easily have done it upstairs, you know. So yeah, I think random is number two. My most vivid memory of the Royal Court has to be as a performer because as I mentioned, random, David Tucker Green's play, I'm decorating my auntie's flat. Uh, I'm thinking I'm, I'm going to do something non actory you know, for a couple of days. I get a call from the Royal Court. They want you to come and cover on book for random. So all I'm, the next thing I know, I'm in a cab. I come down to the Royal Court. I go right down to the downstairs stage. Sasha Ware, Debbie Tucker Green and Amy Ball. And suddenly I'm, I'm reading random. We do a day and a half rehearsal. And then I'm on stage w with a lectern, with the script in front of 400 people and uh, yeah, and I do it on book and uh, that was, yeah, the most compelling experience I've ever had. It was, uh, I was standing in the wings and my heart was, was beating like a drum. Um, I was like, okay, what have I signed up for? Um, and then the assistant director, Bola, came out and he was so blasé. He was like, yeah, they're ready for you now. He was so blasé that I just kind of burst out laughing and then weirdly, the severity of it kind of faded away and I just went out and after the first few lines, it just kind of flew. The Royal Court has been so important after, over the last 60 years because, you know, when you look at theatre, it's a tradition that's always looking back, you know, we're always doing rehashes of Shakespeare's, we're always doing, you know, Chekhov, Ibsen or Bernard Shaw, you know, and, and I think without the Royal Court, you know, we wouldn't have this amazing you know, flurry of plays about now, you know, for now, and plays that then become a part of that history. And so I think, um, you know, the Royal Court, more than any other theatre, you know, completely commits its time to finding those new plays, those new playwrights, those new stories for today. When there isn't money there, it's so easy to fall into stardom and celebrity, and I just hope that the Royal Court can continue to support new emerging voices and, and to throw them out there in the Colosseum, you know.
regardless. If it didn't exist, I would probably cry. I don't think I would have been a playwright, no, without the Royal Court, no. Because I think you see so many young playwrights coming through here and, and, and getting a platform to, to, you know, to express their voices. And I think without, without seeing that, one probably thinks it's not possible. So for me, it, it, it made it very real that it was possible and that I, I could be a part of that canon, as it were. Yeah, so, yeah.